Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for November 8th, 2021. Well, hey everyone, I hope you had a fantastic weekend, and we have a market pressing for more records this morning. So how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can get some information about how we may want to approach today on this Monday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Top of the morning, everyone. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate it. Taking a look at this market, we just have a relentless bull and there just doesn't seem to be anything that can stop these bulls from pushing to the upside. Let's take a look at the diamonds here. Diamonds continue to extend up, as you can see, very strong upside trend. However, we do want to notice that we are considerably pulled away from the um, next support level. And this is actually not a very strong support level. The real strong support would be down here. And if we were to go to the Dow, if we were to go to the Dow, from where we were here on Friday and we're trying to push a little higher here this morning. We've got, oh, let's say nearly a thousand points, 940 points down to that price support. So as we continue to extend higher, I want to caution everyone to be a little bit careful not to chase already extended stocks with that fear of missing out, just in case that profit taking um, wave begins. I thought we might be showing a little bit of that here on Friday with a, that um, little inverted hammer shooting star type pattern here on the chart. But this morning we've got the bulls all fired up again this morning and they're pressing to um, set some new records here this morning. So watch that closely. Um, we do have that potential of a pop and drop because we had Asian stocks right across the board last night, except Shanghai that was just barely in the green and European stocks are mostly down this morning as well. So this could be a little bit of a false read. We want to be a little bit careful on that just in case we gap up and then find nothing but sellers this morning. So watch that closely. Then let's take a look at our SPY, SPY. SPY is trying to move up, but not as aggressively as the Dow is today. And let's take note here, guys, that we have been moving up and we have really become very, very parabolic in this chart. We're just really stretching this to the upside. Now, as those bulls seem to act like there is just nothing of concern um, uh, as these prices continue to rise, one of the things I do worry about is that we really haven't left much of any kind of support underneath this move. So what that would suggest here is if we pull back, we could really rapidly come all the way back into here to test this level of support. And just keep in mind, it's not exactly a strong level of price action support. If we were to fall through there, we could go further. But just keep a close eye on that. This parabolic nature here in the chart is not looking not looking very good to me however there's no there's nothing in this chart yet that suggests that the bears are uh, coming in and that the bulls are willing to give up take a look at more of a, a little spinning top um, candle pattern here suggesting maybe just a little tiny bit of weakness but not enough to be um, ultimately concerned about. If we take a look at the NASDAQ, QQQ had um, a little bit rougher day on Friday. Um, we actually pulled back a little bit more. Um, keep in mind this little um, spinning top doji up here doesn't necessarily mean a top. It just says uh, maybe a little caution. And notice we're not we're pushing even less hard here in the QQQ this morning, which leads me to think that that pop and drop um, could be possible. And also, I want to continue to point out that as we moved up in this chart, we've really gone parabolic in this move and that there really is no price support in the chart until we pull all the way back here. So just kind of keep in mind, you don't want to be the last person in the door 
when they finally pull the plug on this. And I'm not saying they are going to pull the plug, just I think logic would suggest that we're getting that the odds, let's say, the odds are growing of a pullback. So watch that closely in case that does occur. And then if we take a look at IWM, IWM stretched itself out and I got to tell you I was I was really blown away with the way we popped through this area. Um pushing through but I tell you we've got tremendous strength in that energy sector and oil prices going higher today energy prices uh, moving on through and um, the news was out this morning we're uh, nationally we're up a dollar 32 a gallon for gasoline in just 11 months pretty amazing and the market just continues to ignore and just continues to push uh, despite the inflationary impacts that that creates but pushing on through here as you can see breaking that resistance in the chart um, iwm does suggest that we could catch a pullback with that little bit of a shooting star left on Friday trying to push through this morning but keep in mind a pullback into here there's an awful lot of price support in here so if we can hold in here IWM could contact this trend here and just continue on going to the upside so IWM structurally with so much um, support in this chart if it holds that looks pretty darn bullish and then let's take a look at our T2122, which is the four week new high, new low ratio. If we take a look at this, we continue to stay elevated. And with the gap up this morning um, showing in the Dow, we're probably going to gap up into this range um, up in here. And we're back here again in that bearish reversal zone. So we want to be careful and be watching again as we gap up into the open and gap up into new records for that potential of the pop and drop where we could um, try and entice as many people in as we can first thing in the morning and then maybe see a little bit of profit taking coming into the market so watch that closely what it also means is that we don't have a whole lot of room for upside um, on t21 22 but boy oh boy we do have some big downside opportunity in the chart so watch carefully for that let's take a look at our vix now our VIX, interesting chart here on the VIX, as we were rising hard um, and um, got a little bit of pullback on Friday, but we rose hard first thing in the morning. We held this support level here and noticed that we saw follow through bullishness here on the VIX, a little bit of fear. So this also is that tiny little bit of warning that um, there may be that possibility of a pop and drop. Notice we have some price resistance in this chart. Um, and as we continue to, if we continue to push up, that'll be key whether or not we push on through there um, in that level. But right now, I would just be a little bit cautious this morning and be careful not to chase in first thing this morning. Then let's take a look at our uh, T21. Oh, 07. Now T2107, I, I generally look at this on that just simple line chart, but I got to tell you guys, this is a bullish chart starting to form up here. T2107, we're breaking that downtrend here, as you can see in the chart, and we've wound around building this base in here, pushing up through some price resistance, and we've held that price support in there. So we had a little bullishness coming in here on Friday in T2107, those stocks coming up out of there uh, from below their 200. Remember, this is the percentage of stocks above the 200 day moving average. And notice that we have 51% of the overall stocks above their 200 day moving average. We haven't seen that for quite a while getting above 50%. So that's a strong sign that the bulls are lifting or this relentless move has pulled a lot of those stocks out of uh, the pits of, of ugliness below that 200 day and they are responding back higher. That's a good sign for the market. Now let's take a look at T2101, however. Now T2101, 
continues, and I'm going to go back to um, my uh, line chart here. T2101 continues to move down in this wedging pattern. And notice we pushed back down here. We saw these lows. We continue to range around here in this wedge. Now, we could certainly just keep going out here and continue to tighten that wedge up. But we also want to watch for that possibility that if we do get a selling wave that we could pop out of here and maybe hold that would be a little bit of a problem for the market that might mean that those bears are going to get a little bit more feisty um, in that push so watch that closely we certainly have that possibility we can continue to wind up in here but watch for that possibility it just seems to me the odds of a pullback continue to grow every single day and i gotta tell you guys there's reason out there i think that last week i shared with you a couple of metrics and i'm going to share with those with you again this morning take a look um, at the p and e historical or p and e ratio versus the historical notice that at this point we are now 99 percent above the historical average the only time we have ever been higher in this market is the internet bubble in 1999 where we reached 132 percent so can we continue to go higher oh heck yeah the way this market's acting they might want to break this record too but let's keep in mind that we are extremely overvalued in this market and um, that a pullback could occur at any time and should not be a surprise honestly and then if we take a look at the buffett indicator this is an indicator that warren buffett uses uses and it is a ratio with the value of the market versus the gdp and notice on the buffett indicator um, we are now 216 percent above the gdp um, market value above the GDP, which is 73% above the long-term historical average in, um, in that um, indicator. So remarkable extension here in the market and something that should be noted, not suggesting that the bottom is going to fall out of this, but we should note that we are overextended and be prepared for the fact that if we start to fall, it could be a hard fall. So watch carefully for that. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. Now, our economic calendar, um, interestingly enough, doesn't have a whole lot on it, but a whole bunch of Fed speak um, this morning. Notice we've got Fed speakers this morning. We got one, two, and then Jerome Powell, and then three and four um, Fed speakers today. So we've got a lot of Fed speak going on here today. Not too much in this calendar this week until we start slide over toward the midweek, but we've got PPI in here. Um, that'll be interesting. Um, we'll want to keep an eye on that we've got cpi that's going to be the interesting one i think this week and the the one we're really going to want to keep an eye on um, interestingly enough we've moved jobless claims over here to wednesday um, we have an empty day here on thursday so um, interesting um, change in the calendar just watch that close um, pretty light week on the economic calendar. When it comes to the earnings calendar, however, we have a relatively busy week again. We're starting off today with about 200 companies reporting, and that's going to ramp up to about 250 tomorrow, uh, 200, a little over 200 on um, Wednesday. We'll drop down just below 200 on Thursday, and then Friday it gets very, very light. So we still have a busy week of earnings. Uh, to continue to fuel the market higher. Now, um, if you want to catch the full list of notables, go click the link just below the title of the video. That'll take you back to the morning blog where I've prepared that list of notables you may want to pay attention to. Uh, probably the, um, the top one for today will be PayPal. PayPal has been moving in an ugly downside move. And this afternoon, PayPal will report. So keep a close eye on that. We're also gonna hear from um, 3D Systems. They will be reporting. We're gonna hear from Zynga today. Keep a close eye on that. We've got Trip on the list. 
been moving at an ugly downtrend, trying to move up here. Um, SD, whoops, SDC, SDC is reporting. Uh, TME is in there reporting. TTD is also reporting. So if you want to get a full list of that, again, go back to the morning blog and you can grab that. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me this quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you feel these videos are worthy, if they're helpful, you can do me a favor and click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment that helps um, the channel continue to grow, which by the way, guys, we're just about, just about to 24,700. Thank you so much, you guys, as the channel continues to grow. And keep in mind, when we hit 25,000, I will be sharing with um, everyone um, on YouTube um, one of my personally carved Christmas trees. Um, you can choose whether you want lights on it or no lights on it. And um, as you can see, I have a whole lot more here to get finished up. So um, as I continue to carve these, just um, um, think about what you might want to, uh, to get or receive, and I will ship you a personally carved tree once we make that. Also, I wanna say thank you so much to everyone who supports the channel with the Buy Me A Coffee link. That's also below the title of the video. You guys are truly awesome. Thank you so much. Let's take a look at these stocks that, are, that could be setting up. And please keep in mind, guys, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. You have to do your own due diligence. Make sure you understand the risk of every single, single trade that you trade. And you should never, ever blindly follow anyone else's trade ideas. Let's take a look at General Motors. General Motors is setting up here in a pretty interesting pattern. Now notice we sold off and we broke this support here in the chart, but we have confidently reclaimed that level. Now any rest consolidation or pullback could set up an opportunity here in that chart. So keep a close eye on that. Um, General Motors looks like it may be setting up here to the upside. So uh, watch that close. Closely, excuse me. If we take a look at Las Vegas Sands, LVS. Whoops, there we go. LVS. LVS has been moving up in an interesting pattern. We're pushing up through this bottom. Notice how we've rounded this bottom out. We're rounding this up here to the upside. And as that continues, we want to, and notice that we've popped through that resistance right here in the chart. So any rest or pullback in here could potentially set up that next entry signal into that chart. And I want, want to also point out that this is what we call a rounded bottom breakout. By the way, my good buddy, um, Rick Sadler, is going to be teaching a class coming up on the rounded bottom breakout. If you are interested in joining that class, and I got to tell you guys, this is one of those patterns that I have traded for years and years and years, and it's just extremely successful. Um, you want to go over to the Hit and Run Candlesticks website and check that out about signing up for that class. But this pattern is a very, very productive pattern, and although we are stretched out at the moment, I would wait for the next little rest consolidation pullback, and then look for that opportunity that we follow trend here to the upside, and the ultimate target up here is the 200-day moving average. So keep a close eye on that. LVS might be one to watch. You might also keep an eye on Win. Win has recently created that round of bottom breakout pattern, pushing up. Notice this nice little consolidating move here where we just kind of pulled that 50 day moving average out here to the right. And now we started to perk to the upside. Any rest or pullback in here, if we can catch a little consolidation in here, I would look for that next opportunity find that trade in here and that opportunity for us to push up toward that 200. And by the way, just because I drew that that way, doesn't mean I suspect that we're gonna shoot straight up to the 200. It'll probably move up, consolidate, move up, consolidate um, in that chart. So watch that close. Win looking pretty strong. Let's also take a look at um, Mondelez. Mondelez, interesting pattern here. Um, we got past 
that earnings report and we held up pretty well in here. Notice that we're holding above some support levels in the chart. We keep breaking through to these new levels and we're showing a little bit of bullishness here this morning. Now, I won't be too surprised if we have to consolidate here for just a little bit, kind of consolidate out here toward this trend or even pull back to contact that trend. But let's watch for that next opportunity higher and Mondelez, good divvy payer, might be something to keep an eye on. When it comes to divvy payers, if you, as you guys remember, I mentioned ExxonMobil, and I still gotta put that one on the list. ExxonMobil breaking through resistance here in the chart, and I don't think there is I don't think too many people believe that fuel prices are going to go down heading into the winter and OPEC seems committed to keeping those prices high and, and they're not really happy with the United States so no reason for them to be doing us any favors at the moment. Let's keep an eye on this and you can see we're trying to push up here a little bit this morning in Exxon. Um, talk about a good strong divvy payer. It might be something to watch if you were looking for some long-term holds. Um, looking pretty good overall. Take a look at um, FedEx. FedEx coming up out of this bottoming pattern and as you can see breaking the downtrend here moving up in this chart. This is a very bullish pattern starting to set up and it is also another one of those rounded bottom breakouts starting to happen. Now for me when we pop out of that 50-day moving average like this and notice that 50-day moving average is still declining I want to see this either consolidate or pull back to test and have that 50 day moving average starting to turn just a little bit higher. Let's watch that carefully in here. If we can get a couple more days of rest in here on FedEx, then look for that next opportunity to the upside. Could be setting up and could be looking pretty good, darn good. You know, there are stocks out there um, really doing um, amazingly well, but some of them are so incredibly extended in the short term. I would be really, really careful of them. However, I gotta say, guys, that if you take a look at Pfizer pumping through um, here, this back up through this um, support area, let's wait for a little bit of proof that it can hold up here. But this might be interesting to you, Pfizer. Pfizer is the second most widely held stock by Congress. Um, think they know something? Uh, maybe. Uh, might want to keep an eye on that as we continue to pump taxpayer money into these companies buying up COVID vaccines and everything they produce. So watch that closely. It could have to rest out here toward the trend. And what's interesting, the number one, the number one held stock by members of Congress happens to be J&J. &J. So keep an eye on J&J &J here holding up in that chart, holding support, keep an eye on this, may be um, an interesting chart if that can start moving back to the upside. So there's a few charts for you to look at today, a few things for you to ponder and decide what you want to do. Well, everyone, I wanna wish you all a fantastic day of trading and great profits. And I will um, we'll see you right back here, bright and early Tuesday morning. Have a great one, everyone, and I wish you all the best.